Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday afternoon. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. I want to draw your attention to the Q&A button on your screen. That's the question and answer feature. You can use that to type questions to any of our presenters at any time. You're not limited to the six minutes that a college is presenting to address questions to them. So at any point, um, ask questions of the colleges, specific questions about the college, questions about the application process, uh, questions, really anything related to college admission is fair game. So we love to hear from you. Uh, send us your questions. Your camera and your microphone are turned off, so the panelists won't be able to see or hear you. So that Q&A feature is really the only way for you to communicate with us. Also, this is just one of many different sessions that are happening uh, as part of this College Fair series. So be sure to sign up for others. Um, also, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Again, strivescan.com slash WACAC. So now I would like to turn it over to our first presenter from Arizona State University. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sung An. Uh, I'm the Greater Los Angeles Recruitment Coordinator for Arizona State University. My colleague Jennifer Pelton uh, will also be assisting with uh, answering questions uh, during, uh, during the college fair itself. So let's begin. Arizona State University, we are located in Phoenix, Arizona, fifth largest city in the country, largest state capital as well. We really like to leverage our place here at ASU Four different campuses in the Phoenix area allow our students to uh, get connected to uh, just all the opportunities that the city of Phoenix has to offer. Uh, based on what you're studying, uh, we, we have strategically located our programs to make sure that you have access to um, everything from healthcare facilities, uh, governmental buildings, uh, our Fortune 500 companies. For instance, being in Phoenix, um, all of Arizona's Fortune 500 companies are within 30 minutes of our campuses. So we really wanna make sure that our students um, have that access and we certainly love to connect our students in that way. Uh, so, uh, so with our four different campuses, we have the historic Tempe campus, your uh, direct Pac-12 competitor, um, over 50,000 students located there, uh, over 200 majors located on the Tempe campus alone. Uh, the, our co College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, our largest college is located here as well as many of our programs in the WP Carey School of Business, a top 25 business program, and the Fulton Schools of Engineering, uh, the largest engineering program in the country. Next, we also have our downtown Phoenix campus. This is where our Edson College of Nursing is located, as well as the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. Uh, an example of how we leverage our place within the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, students um, have our, um, we students are able to participate in a live newscast Cronkite News, five nights a week on Arizona PBS uh, in, from the downtown Phoenix campus. Uh, students are able to uh, branch out from there, uh, whether they're doing local news reporting or sports reporting. Right now, it's a good time for spring training, so uh, our students are still participating in that. Uh, the Sandra Day O'Connor School of Law is also located at the downtown Phoenix campus. We also have the Polytechnic campus in the, in the Mesa area, the East Valley. Uh, students that are interested in some of our hands-on engineering programs, as well as our uh, professional flight program. The Polytechnic campus was built on a former Air Force base. So we take our take advantage of the fact that we still have a neighboring airport there uh, for students to get their training. Finally, we have the West Campus. Uh, it is our smallest campus, hovering around 5,000 students in, in Glendale, the, in the West Valley. Students thinking about uh, maybe going into teaching or perhaps studying uh, forensic science. Uh, within the new college. There's some excellent uh, liberal arts uh, programs that you can participate in there, as well as the Enquirer program for students who are really interested in research. Uh, so with, within those four campuses, each campus is self-sustaining. So we wanna be sure that uh, students are able to, uh, they're living on campus, they're housed by their program, they're able to access fitness centers, everything that they need taking classes can be done on that one campus. Uh, so going into, so this ties nicely with community. Students are connected from day one on, uh, during their first year on campus. And, uh, and as I mentioned, students are connected by their major. So they're able to 
uh, uh, take classes together and really uh, bond quickly and get assimilated to, to ASU. The one exception is actually Barrett the Honors College. So with ASU, large school, over 70,000 students, uh, it's very easy, it is nonetheless very easy to make a large school seem small. And one of the ways that we allow our students to customize their experience is through Barrett the Honors College. Uh, as New York Times has uh, called us, we are the gold standard of honors colleges. We're really proud of the way that students are in a co uh, community of scholars. So even during their first year, you're taking uh, smaller classes, you're able to sign up for classes before everyone else, even as a first year student. Uh, students in our very residential complex on the Tempe campus or in our very residential communities um, out, at our non Tempe campuses, students are able to get into a deep dive of learning. They're able, they're completing a capstone project before they graduate as well as, um, as participating in the honors contracts, uh, doing additional research work that makes them very attractive for uh, graduate and professional programs uh, and beyond. Uh, so many ways for students to get connected there. Please ask us for additional questions on, on more about the Barrett the Honors College. Over 65 religious organizations and houses of worship, over a thousand different clubs. We're a division one school, but we also have intramural sports. Lots of ways for students to really find, find their community uh, within these campuses. Now applying to ASU, uh, we're very straightforward with our application process. You can apply through our website. You can also apply through the common application or the coalition application. Uh, we do not look at essays, nor do we look at letters of recommendation. We are primarily going to be looking at your 16 core competency courses. So in subjects such as English, lab science, math, social science, second language, fine arts classes. We're going to be looking at your unweighted core GPA starting from the ninth grade. Uh, we have an assured admissions process where if you have a 3.0 GPA or you are um, in a certain class rank, uh, or if you happen to have test scores on file, you are guaranteed admission for many of our programs. Some of our programs have elevated requirements, but in the most, uh, but in the vast majority of majors, a 3.0 GPA guarantees admission to many of our programs. Uh, for Barrett the Honors College, there is a secondary application that you will be completing. Uh, what's also going to be relevant here is scholarships. We do, uh, we currently are not requiring test scores uh, for scholarship consideration. Uh, we, we will be looking at your academic record. There is no separate application to apply for, the, for these primary scholarships that I'll be talking about, including the New American University scholarships. We also have a national scholar award for students who are looking at, um, who've done well on the PSAT. We're also a WUI school, almost 100 majors are WUI eligible. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you. Thank you for listening and uh, we'll proceed to our next school. Thank you so much. And our next presentation will be from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Hi, everybody. My name is Krista. I am an assistant director of admissions on the Embry-Riddle Prescott campus. Considering that we don't have a lot of time today, I think the best way to optimize our time is to show you a video of what the Arizona campus has to offer better than to tell you. Data, high fluid thermal conditioning not required, Max. That's correct flight. GC, go. Guidance, go. Fido, go. Prop, go. GNC, go. Max, go. Eagle, go. Ecom, go. FAO, go. ACO, go.
So just to go over a few of the things that we saw in that video, we are the number one ranked aerospace engineering program in the nation that is specific to the Arizona campus. We are the, whoop, sounds like the video is still playing. Um, give me one second, I'm so sorry. My first flight actually took place within my first week at Ember Riddle. I had never been in there. Apologize about that. So go, moving forward, um, we have the only College of Security and Intelligence in the nation. And then our Florida campus also offers the aerospace physiology program, which is a pre-med program based on um, how space flight uh, affects the human body. We are an ABED accredited institution, which is the top accreditation that an engineering or STEM or tech degree program can have. So if that's what you're looking into studying, I definitely recommend that you go to an institution that is ABED accredited. Our graduates also um, yield among the highest return on investment in the nation. We are in the top 1%. So of all colleges across the United States, we are in the very, very top of what you invest into your college tuition, you are getting out in your careers. We are also the number one ranked institution in both Arizona and Florida for the highest level of quality of education, as well as affordability. We offer two residential campuses, one in Daytona Beach, Florida, which is a little bit larger. And then we here in Prescott, Arizona are a little bit smaller, about 3000 students. I didn't realize when I was going to college how valuable that is. Um, having an average class size of 24 students, we don't have any classrooms on campus that can house more than 60 students. So that gives you the opportunity to build relationships with your professors as well as your classmates, because um, your network is your net worth. So building those relationships in your undergrad will definitely help you get those jobs when you graduate. We have a lot of clubs and organizations on campus, plenty of opportunity to get involved. We, uh, we offer 10 intercollegiate sports. We compete in the NAIA, which is just for smaller private institutions. And we also host the Air Force and the Army ROTC. Some of the outcomes that were mentioned is that we have a 94% job placement rating after college. The national average to that is about a 40%. So that means that most students are going to college and not getting jobs within their discipline when they graduate. We are very, very proud of our students for obtaining a statistic that high. A lot of that has to do with our industry ties as well as our career services who house a career um, expo in the fall and in the spring and then are actively sending you job opportunities as well as internships to your student email every single week and we have a great alumni network out there. As for our application process, if you are currently a senior, you can apply. We have rolling admissions, which means that we don't have any deadlines. We are not on the Common App, so you're going to have to submit an online application. Um, but all we require right now is your unofficial high school transcripts, and we consider your weighted GPA. Everything after that is optional. So your letters of recommendation are optional. Your test scores, essays, and resumes are optional. However, those extra documents really do help you in the application process. For financial aid, over 90% of our students are do receive financial aid. You have to have above a 3.0 to be considered for merit-based scholarships. But we have a lot of students that um, obtain external scholarships, whether that be in the STEM field or anything like that. I'm going to link my contact information in the chat feature so that we can go over anything that you guys might want to in detail. But up at the top here, you can get the contact information for our admissions department for each campus, our Daytona Beach campus, the Prescott campus, and also our online campus. Um, and they'll be able to help you through the process of anything. A little bit about Prescott, we are a high desert climate, so it's not hot and we just had snow the other day. So it's not hot when you think of normally of Arizona. Um, we have four beautiful seasons out here. So I highly recommend if you can to come visit us at the Embry-Riddle Prescott campus. Thank you so much, Krista. And next we will be hearing from Northern Arizona University. Alrighty, I'm just sharing my screen really quickly. Alrighty, so my name is Moira Bellamy and I am an admissions officer here at NAU. I don't know why it's not sharing. There we go. <laughs> um, I did put my contact information on this slide and I will put, show it again at the end. So if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me as well as I will put that in the chat box when I am finished here today. But I'm gonna go in and talk a little bit about Flagstaff in general. So kind of like um, my colleague at Embry-Riddle, um, we are a completely different climate here in Flagstaff. So we get about hundred inches of snow on average. And then in the summertime, we typically um, are seeing temperatures of about 85 to 95 degrees. 
So we've never had a day in history here in Flagstaff recorded over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you like the cooler weather, Flagstaff might be a great fit for you. Um, we're also located really close to a lot of great things. So just about two hours away from Phoenix, about a four hour drive from the Las Vegas area, six hours from LA. So a lot of really great places kind of within driving distance of our campus. Now jumping directly into the academics here at NAU. So we are a smaller institution. We typically serve about 22,000 students here on our Flagstaff Mountain campus. That is our main campus here in Arizona, but we do also have statewide um, campuses throughout the state, as well as we do have 97 undergraduate majors to um, serve our students in nine academic colleges. So a lot of opportunity if you are looking to, um, you know, study any of those academic areas of interest. And then if we don't have that exact major that you might be looking for, we probably have a major that's very similar that can get you that same end result that you're looking for. Now, I do want to tell you a little bit about NAU's kind of career development as well as student um, kind of engagement. So here on campus, since we are a smaller institution, we really do want you to succeed when you graduate. So any student that's looking for the opportunity to do undergraduate research here on our campus has that opportunity. Um, we do have a platform that our students can utilize called Handshake, where you can go and look for on-campus jobs. You can look for jobs after you graduate. Um, we do also have this office, Career Development, that serves to allow students the opportunity to, um, you know, take your resume in if you want it to get looked over. We have cover letter workshops. Um, right now we are doing virtual career fairs as well. So a lot of opportunities for you to get out there before you graduate so that you can start to build that professional experience. Now, if you choose to live with us here on campus, and I say choose because it's never guaranteed, or I'm sorry, never, um, what am I looking for? You don't have to live on campus. Um, you do have that option. So if you like to, as a first year student, um, your first year here on campus, you would be living in what we call a residential college. So that just means that everyone that's living around you in your residence hall is studying in the same academic college as you. So day one, you're making those friends that have a similar interest as you, and you're getting to know students that are probably going to be in those same classes as you. We also do have over 400 um, different clubs and organizations on campus. These are anything from academic-based, diversity-based, we have um, interest-based, we have clubs, intramurals, um, fraternity and sorority life, kind of anything that students are looking for. So a lot of opportunities to get out there, make those friends, create those connections, and really kind of elevate this experience for yourself. Now, another really awesome opportunity that students from um, kind of the western part of the, the country have is what we call WUI. So here at NAU, what that means is that if you apply to NAU and you're admitted to NAU, you will be offered a 40% reduction on the non-resident tuition rate. So that's kind of what our WUI looks like. Students don't need to be majoring in anything specific, and you do not need to have a certain GPA in high school. If you are admitted and you are a resident of one of these states that you see highlighted in gold on this map, you would be offered that wooey tuition rate. Another really great thing that we do here at NAU is when you apply for admissions, we're already going to look at you to see if you qualify for a merit-based scholarship. So these are really great first-year scholarships. So that means if you graduate from high school and this is the first institution that you would attend, um, you could be eligible for an additional financial aid scholarship. So they're tuition-based scholarships and um, you kind of can see that highlighted here on the screen. Now I do want to talk a little bit about the application process here at NAU. So we are actually what um, on what you call a rolling application. So that means we don't have like a hard and strict deadline for when students have to apply to be admissible. So if you wanted to apply and you are a current senior, you could still do that. It's completely up to you. But another really great part about NAU is that we are completely test score optional. So students do not need to send us an SAT or an ACT score to be um, eligible for admissions. And students do not need to submit any essays. So the only thing we're going to look at when we elevate or when we evaluate you for admissions are 16 classes that you've taken throughout high school. So if you have questions about the application process, different opportunities here on campus, um, anything along those lines, again, my name is Moira Bellamy. Um, I am a, an admissions officer here at NAU, and I would love to help you in any way that I possibly can. So I will go ahead and put my contact information in the chat box as well. So if you need any assistance, please let me know. Thank you so much, Moira. And next, we'll be hearing from Prescott College. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right. Can you see my screen okay? We can. Looks great. Uh, 
Great, thank you. Um, so my name is Brianna Lehman. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions for specifically our undergraduate online programs. Um, a little bit about us. So we are also in Prescott, just like Emory Riddle, and we are just under two hours from Phoenix. So we're in Northern Arizona. Um, we offer two different sorts of programs. We have our on-campus program, which is in Prescott, and then we have our online program. For our online program, there are no residency requirements, so you're never ever required to come to campus. Um, a little bit over to the right there, you'll see our degree programs, very liberal arts based, and we are known for our experiential education programs. So the first one is sort of our Hallmark program, it's adventure education. So if you want to work for the park service, uh, work for state parks, be um, a guide, work for an outfitter, um, this would be the major for you. And it, the classes you would take are things like avalanche training, wilderness first response, uh, rock climbing, kayaking, um, backpacking. So it's a very fun degree. Um, we also offer art and humanities. So if you're interested in combining your love of humanity, say in social justice and with art, you can do that within that major. We have arts and letters, social justice studies, uh, education programs, so you can be certified in the state of Arizona, and we also prepare students for licensure online as well um, to be a teacher. So if you're interested in special education, elementary education, uh, early childhood, that would be the program for you. Uh, we also have environmental studies, human development psychology. Now this one's interesting, interdisciplinary studies. This is where you get to create your own major. So I have a student that just entered the program, for example, and he was interested in the history of tattoo art and he wasn't able to find that sort of major anywhere. So he came to us. So his degree would say Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies in the History of Tattoo Art. Uh, we also have Sustainability Management sustainable community development. And this is a brand new major we just launched last week, um, sustainable food systems. We have a BA or a BS within that major. We have a very generous, generous uh, transfer policy. So we accept up to 90 transfer credits. So as long as they're 100 level or higher and a C minus or higher, so if you're considering going to community college first, um, this would be a great transfer policy for you. And we also offer prior life experience credits or PLA. So if you have life or work experience and you want to receive credit for it, you can do that at Prescott College once you are a student. Uh, we just cap it at 60 credits. We have also what we offer an accelerated master's. So we take up to 12 credits that can apply for not only the last term of your bachelor's degree, but the first term, term of your graduate degree as well. So saving you time as well as, as tuition because you receive the undergraduate tuition rate. Um, another interesting thing that we offer at Prescott College, which makes us a little bit different from other colleges, is we have independent and mentored study classwork. classwork. Um, so mentored study, you can get credit uh, for working under a mentor and it will apply directly to your major. So if there is a person in your field that is willing to mentor you either through an internship or just the mentorship, uh, we can give credit for that course. Um, we also have independent study. So you get to create your, your own classes uh, with us if you choose. So you can come up with the title of the class, um, the description of the class. You do this all with your faculty advisor uh, when you're at Prescott College. And also, is there a book or research paper that excites you? You get to choose that, um, the outcome of the course. So do you want to do a project, an essay? And all that fulfills your class credit um, towards graduation with us at Prescott College. Uh, and we have rolling admissions as well, so you can apply pretty much any time. Although I do always encourage students to apply sooner rather than later, just so you can sort out uh, all sorts of things like registration and financial aid. Um, so we have spring, summer, and fall terms for online and spring and fall for on campus. And we also offer campus housing as well if you're interested in living on campus. And um, the application can be found on our website and it consists of an application, a letter of reference or recommendation and an essay, as well as your transcripts. And if you have less than 60 college credits, you'll want to also send us your high school transcripts. So that's just a little bit about us. I know we don't have much time, but I will go ahead and leave my contact information in the chat box and you can feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much, Brianna. Thank you. And next we will hear from the University of Arizona. 
Thank you so much. So I will go ahead and share my screen. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Chloe Davis. Can you go ahead and see my PowerPoint? Does everything look good? Yep, it looks fantastic. Wonderful. Um, well, my name is Chloe Davis. I'm a Northern California recruiter for the University of Arizona. Thanks again for spending the time to learn a little bit more about us. Uh, the U of A is located in Tucson, Arizona, which is Arizona's second largest city. If I were to really distill the essence of what is the U of A? We are a big school with world-class research, a lot of school spirit, and a huge amount of variety. Truly, my favorite thing about the U of A is that you as a student kind of get to customize what your four years looks like and really carve your own path through the university, whether that's through an academic program, an extracurricular activity, your internship. Um, we really do have everything that there is to offer, so it's very easy for you to kind of select what your college experience is going to look like. Here you can see where we're located in terms of the state of Arizona and the greater U.S. We represent a really large student body, 45,000 total students, about 35,000 undergraduates. Um, we see students from all 50 states and over 120 different countries, although we do see uh, the primary amount of our students from the West Coast. Um, we are really proud of the diversity on campus. Nearly half of our students identify as diverse, about a third are first generation. And even on a campus as large as ours, we do still want to make sure that you're getting the individual attention that you are looking for as a student. Our average class size is between 20 and 29 students, so pretty on par with the national uh, class size for high school students. Um, and even in some of your larger lecture halls, you often break out into discussion groups, meet in recitations, and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1. So our professors are really accessible when it comes to sending them an email or setting up an appointment to get your questions answered. Uh, we really do want every student to feel like Tucson is kind of their community and their home away from home. Here you can see a little bit more of our campus. We sit on one square mile, so it's very easy to walk around. We also do have a bus system that can take you all around campus, you know, to the local spots and very convenient for going to a study abroad, an internship, or even if you're just coming to us from out of state, we're only eight miles from the Tucson airport. So it's really easy to navigate um, just the Tucson metropolitan area as well as our campus. Within about a 10 minute walk, you are in downtown Tucson. We're in a valley surrounded by mountains, average high temperature of 83 degrees. So I am certainly biased, but I think it's a wonderful place to spend four years. We also have the nation's best 23 miles of authentic Mexican food. So definitely a good stop for foodies. We are actually UNESCO's, uh, we were the first in the United States, a world city of food to celebrate the really rich culinary heritage in Tucson. As far as your academics go, again, something for everyone. We have 250 different degree programs broken out into 20 different academic colleges, which you can see in the column on the right. Some of our most popular majors are located in our business college. We also do have the College of Engineering, Nursing. Our dance program is one of the most competitive outside of New York City. Or if you have two or 20 different career interests and you just aren't quite sure what you want to study yet, you can absolutely come in undecided. While most students will apply into their major of choice, you can choose to come in without selecting a major, meet with our career center, explore your options, and really take your time to find your best fit at the University of Arizona. We also do have a law school, a medical school, and a veterinary school, so we see a lot of students coming to us for pre-health majors. We have lots of student services for you to take advantage of, career development, our student health center, really just in everything that we do, students are absolutely our number one priority. And I think it's really easy to feel that when you're on campus. Outside of the classroom, again, we're an R1 research institution, so there are hundreds of projects going on at any one time, whether they're in our College of Education, projects we're running with NASA in water conservation. Um, there's a lot of really great ways to be on the ground floor of some cool scientific research. We also have Division I athletics, intramural sports, Greek life, and over 600 clubs and student organizations. With a campus as large as ours, I think it's a great idea to get involved because it helps campus, again, feel like your community and so much more than just a giant sea of people. Speaking of your literal home away from home, freshmen are not required to live in our dorms, although I highly encourage it. Students who live in the dorms, even just their first year, had an average higher four-year graduation rate and an average higher GPA. We have 23 dorms to choose from, so if I have not already said it enough, a lot of variety. Check out our housing website if you're interested. We have pictures and videos of every single one of our dorms so you can start to get an idea of what your day in the life of, uh, of a U of A student is really going to look like. 
Now, if all that I have said interests you and you're interested in completing an application, here's what we start with. First, we are on the common application, the coalition application, and we have our own application on our website. Here are those sweet 16 core courses, four years of math and English, three years of science, two years of social studies and foreign language, and a year of fine arts. After that, again, like many of my peers, we have a very straightforward application. We do not use letters of recommendation. The essay is not required. We have an optional personal statement. Um, we use rolling admission, so our aim is to get you a decision in two to four weeks. Here's our scholarship chart for out-of-state students. Um, we will use your unweighted core GPA for your first three years of high school. Um, there are lots of ways to learn a little bit more about us, whether it's taking our virtual tour, emailing your recruiter. If you follow us on Instagram, we have student takeovers every Tuesday and Thursday where you can ask current Wildcats and get some more information about your their experience on campus. And then lastly, just if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Our whole office is here to make sure that you get whatever you need and get your questions answered. But until then, thank you guys. Thank you so much, Chloe. And our last presentation this afternoon is from the University of Arizona um, College of Agricultural Sciences. Thank you. Um, my name is Erin England, and I'm one of the recruitment coordinators for the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences here at the University of Arizona. So I am one of 20 colleges that Chloe was talking about. Um, the reason we divide it by colleges is just to divide our majors up. Um, so as Chloe mentioned, we have 20 colleges. College of Agriculture and Life Sciences is one of those 20. Um, we were actually the first college founded at the University of Arizona um, back in 1885. So we've been around for quite some time. Um, within our college, we have over 21 majors to choose from. So as Chloe mentioned, there's over 300 degree programs at the university. Within our college, we have 21. So if you're interested in going to medical school and the University of Arizona is home to the only two public medical schools in all of Arizona, one in Phoenix and one in Tucson, we have a lot of degree programs that focus on that, like our precision nutrition and wellness that focuses on our DNA and the food we put into our bodies and how those correlate together and, and mesh together. Um, maybe microbiology, or if you're interested in ab applied biotechnology and you wanna work with fermentation or on the other side and work with the vaccines that are going on right now. Or on the flip side, we are the only school in Arizona to offer agricultural education um, in the classes. If you're interested work, to work in social work, maybe family studies and human development, or maybe you're interested in food safety and keeping our food healthy or veterinary science. If you want to take undergraduate degree programs, um, focus on animal health, veterinary health, and then you can go on to the only public BBM or doctor of veterinary medicine program in all of Arizona located at the University of Arizona as well. We are a mini university within our college. So you have all those resources of the University of Arizona, but in addition to that, you have everything that our college has to offer. So we encourage our students to get involved outside of their academics, whether that is within research opportunities. We are a top research institution, um, but there's also research opportunities in every single major that you choose. So if you are a family studies and human development student and you wanna do research, um, you can work with families and children and do research on their, them. We actually have a facility that has a one-way a one mirror classroom um, or sorry, two-way mirror classroom, and you can actually watch um, a therapy session and, and analyze people and how their heart rates go up or what their behavior, their physical behavior, um, what they're doing in that class or in that setting. So there's a lot of cool research opportunities. This one specifically is one of our faculty members working with Banner Health, which is what, right next door to the University of Arizona. They're actually a nutritional sciences faculty member, and what they're doing is they are researching on how cancer patients, um, specifically neck and throat cancer patients, why they get canker sores in their mouth and then um, from chemotherapy. And then what they're trying to do is figure out what types of food we can actually eat to prevent that from happening. Now we also encourage our students to take on internships. Some of our majors require them, some of them do not, but I always encourage students to take on internships because it's a way for you to figure out what you really love and maybe also what you really don't love. And that's the whole point of college is to find your passion and figure out that passion and then make that into a career. Uh, one of our students was a veterinary sciences undergraduate student and she did an internship at one of our vet clinics in town. 
she ended up passing out during her surgery and said, wow, that is not what I want to do. And she took her veterinary science degree and is now going into genetic counseling for humans. So there are a lot of cool things that you can do, but internships are really a great way for you to open your eyes and figure out this is really what I want to do and really what I don't want to do. Um, this is one of our students in our uh, natural resources um, major doing wildlife conservation and management, and she's observing the elephants at the Reed Park Zoo during her internship. We also have over 600 clubs and organizations for you to choose from at the university, like Chloe mentioned. Um, Specifically in our college, we have the equestrian team, if you want to participate in that. We have our plant sciences club that um, this is actually an event that we hosted last year where our students, our prospective students got plants that our plant sciences students um, actually created and grew. Um, and we do also have a greenhouse on top of one of our garages that our students maintain. And then we also have our leadership groups. There are a ton of um, students on our campus that participate in leadership opportunities. We encourage our students to take part in leadership opportunities. This one is our Cal student ambassadors who do research or do outreach with me, um, really do alumni events. And we also have our Dean's Entrepreneurial Leadership Council that focuses on com the community members um, because we are part of Cooperative Extension. We are the only um, university in Arizona to be our land grant University, so we have extension offices all over the state, um, located in every single one of our counties, and our students have opportunities to network and do internships and research opportunities there, and DELC works there. And then we also have our peer mentor group um, for students who really want that extra support in college. We do encourage our students to do study abroad. Um, we are sending students to study abroad programs as we speak. This one is our Mediterranean Diet and Health Study Abroad Program which goes to Southern Italy, but you can do pretty much any country you can think of. There's probably a study abroad program. And then as Chloe mentioned, we have plenty of scholarship opportunities for you. If you're interested in the natural resources major, which has six different emphasis areas, it is part of the WUI program. So that is 150% of in-state tuition. But in addition to that, the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences offers over $1 million in scholarships to just our College of Agriculture and Life Sciences students each and every year. And this is in addition to any merit-based scholarships or WUI um, that you may qualify for as, as a University of Arizona student. My contact information is up there as well as my colleague Ruben, um, as well as our website. So definitely check that out and I'm gonna put it back in the chat, but let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Erin. <clears throat> that is the, <clears throat> excuse me, that is the end of our university presentations, but um, we have a bit of time left, so I will continue to ask you to put your questions in the Q&A box. Um, go ahead and send questions to any of our presenters. Uh, we have a few minutes left. And if I could ask the, the panelists to all turn their cameras and microphones back on, and um, I'll just throw out a, a question to you all, perhaps to answer to the, the audience. If you could give us an interesting or fun fact about your respective university, whether it's a, a campus tradition, maybe a famous alum, your favorite place on campus, some cool event that you do, your best major, whatever it is you want to tell us, one additional fun, just fun thing that'll help us remember you as we leave, leave this afternoon. Um, let's start with, um, how about Arizona State? <clears throat> Gosh, uh, I get, let's see. Uh, probably my, okay, so I guess my favorite fun fact, uh, this might be a unique one. Uh, we have a secret garden on campus. Uh, it's, uh, you, you, you'd be surprised that, yes, here in Arizona, we have plenty of places where there's grass, but the secret garden on campus is probably my favorite reflecting place on campus. Um, it's in the center of campus, uh, close to the library. And uh, I will leave it at that and allow you to uh, find that out when you visit campus. Cool, thank you so much. And next, um, how about Embry-Riddle? Yeah, I'd love to talk about it. I think my favorite tradition here on campus, I graduated from the university um, and it has continued to be one of my favorite traditions is that we host a air show in the fall during our homecoming week where we have our flight team who are national champions, 12 time national champions. They perform some of their um, events there as well as acrobatic pilots. They do things there. Um, so I love going out to that. It's a huge event. We didn't get to do it because of COVID this year, but hopefully this coming fall we'll get to do it. 
Um, we've also had several astronauts graduate from Embry-Riddle, so that would also be probably one of my favorite facts about the university. Very cool, thanks. How about Brianna from Prescott? Sure, I mean, the thing that first struck me about Prescott College was our interesting orientation. There's an option for students to do a three week backpacking trip to the Grand Canyon from Prescott. Um, so I think that's a huge bonding experience for a lot of our new students. They make lifetime friends just through that trip. Cool, thanks. And Northern Arizona. Yeah, um, so probably my favorite event that we do on campus is during homecoming week. Um, we typically turn part of our campus into a carnival. Um, this didn't happen this year, obviously. We live in unprecedented times, um, but it has rides, games, food. There's a bonfire, like it's just so much fun. Um, and it's my favorite because all those students are like running around and making friends and hanging out with their friends. It's just a really, really cool experience. Cool, and the University of Arizona, of course. Well, very similar to Moira, the University of Arizona actually hosts the nation's largest student run carnival every year called the Spring Fling, um, which again, due to COVID, this year is a little different than most, but it's a really cool opportunity for student leadership because it is student run and student organized. Um, and also, it's just a really great kind of celebration of the wildcat spirit. Great. And last but not least, um, last word to Erin from the University of Arizona College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Always still mine, but um, we do have other traditions as well. I de definitely like spring fling on our campus, but I also like homecoming. Um, we have a big bonfire and fireworks, and it's a really fun event for our alumni, but also current students to attend. So definitely um, fun times at the UVA. Great, thank you so much. Um, and that is the end of our presentation today. Um, you can still find in the chat, uh, the chat feature, uh, the contact information for many of our presenters today. So uh, do reach out to them. Um, that's my tip of advice. Never be shy uh, when colleges are offering you the opportunity to connect with them. Um, send your questions, don't, don't be shy. Um, thank you so much for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. Really appreciate you taking a minute to give us some feedback there. Also um, in a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as recordings of all of the other sessions you might have missed online at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Again, strivescan.com slash WACAC. Um, you can also watch that website, Strive Scan, watch for other college fairs happening in the future. Um, so again, thank you so much to our panelists. It was really great to uh, see you all and to learn a bit about your universities. And thank you to all of you for attending. I hope you have a lovely rest of your Sunday evening. Bye-bye.